everybody, it's Teresa. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to make a necklace today using some of the contents from the most recent Potomac Beads Treasure Edition box called Gilded Glamour. I'll put a link in the corner of this video and in the description box below to the unboxing I did for this box in case you want to go back and look at it in case you didn't get to see it where I go into a little bit more detail about the beads and the subscriptions and all. Uh, they have two different subscriptions the treasure edition which is what this is and then they have a kit edition in the kit edition i think you get three projects each month with all the beads and everything you need to make each piece of jewelry uh, i'll put a link in the description box below that will take you directly to the page on their website that tells all about the different subscriptions and and everything about them uh, i'm going to be using the six millimeter Potomac pearls that came in the box. Mine were cranberry was the color. I'm going to be using these jet matted geometric beads that came in the box. I'm going to be using the check faceted four millimeter beads that came in the box. The Aztec gold is the color. I'm going to be using some of the 11 O's that came in the box for spacers. They're Durcoat galvanized light champagne. Uh, I've got some findings in here. I've got a lobster clasp, some jump rings, four wire guardians, and four two by two crimp tubes. This is going to be a two strand necklace. I've got a ball head pin and a, one of the little four millimeter Aztec gold beads. I'm going to hang off the extender chain as a dangle. I've got a couple of pieces of chain and then another smaller length of chain to use as an extender. I've got my bead stoppers, I've got my soft flex beading wire and fine, of course you can use any beading wire you have, whatever beading wire you have. I've got my chain nose pliers, my tweezer pliers, and my round nose pliers. I've got both pairs of my bent chain nose pliers. I've got both pairs of my crimping pliers. I use the Zeron ones for crimping and I use these, uh, the little half circles at the end of it to tuck in the burrs that are left when I cut off wire. Of course, I don't need two pairs of crimping pliers, but I already had these when I bought these, and I guess I just still like to get some use out of these, so I use them to tuck in the burrs when I cut off wire. I have both pairs of my cutters. I use one pair for bead stringing wire and the other pair for head pins and eye pins and craft wire. And I've got my little New Orleans shot glass to put my wire in when I cut it off. I'll only use, I'll only need a lot of these when I make the dangle at the end of the, to go off the end of the extender chain. And I'll try to put links to everything I can find links for in the description box below. So hold on and let me get some of my beads poured out and I'll be back. Okay, in an effort to keep y'all from having to sit and watch me be string all these beads on bead stringing wire, I'm going to do this a little different than I have been. Uh, it takes me a while to do that, and especially with these little 11 O's, it takes me a minute to get them on there. So I've strung my, this is going to be a two strand, I think I said that. And, uh, this is going to be my longest strand, and I have put it on one of these magic rods that uh, Louisa from Misty Moon Design sells that my sweet friend Jamie sent me in some subscriber happy mail. And I'm going to show you my pattern here, and then I'm going to put it on the uh, bead string wire off camera, and then I'll come back and crimp it. So I've got, I'm starting out here with five, five of my 11 O's. A four millimeter and eleven o, three of my six millimeter and eleven o, four millimeter eleven o, three more of my six millimeter eleven o, four millimeter eleven o, five of the jet matted geometric beads with eleven o's between, and then an eleven o, four millimeter eleven o, three of the six millimeter, another eleven o, four millimeter eleven o, three more of the six millimeter. 11 O, 4 millimeter, and then I'm going to end with 5 11 O's. So that's going to be my pattern for my longest strand. And I, some, I, a lot of times I forget, and you all ask me the length of these. This strand before I crimp it is 8 inches, and my other strand is going to be 6 and a half inches before I crimp it. I usually do like an inch and a half or 2 inches between each one. So hold on, I'll put this on bead stringing wire, and then I'll come back and crimp it. So I'll be back. Okay, I've got it strung up now, so I'm going to do my crimping here. I'm going to put on my crimp tube. 
by our guardian. Come down the other channel of my wire guardian. Back through my crimp tube. Make sure to keep my wires from being crossed. Try to hold them apart. I take my crimping pliers and go in that part with the tooth. Lay the tooth on top. I'm going to squeeze. That puts each wire in its own little channel there. Now there's three circular parts up here toward the top. I'm going to go in the middle one because that's the one for the 2x2 two two crimp tubes. I'm going to lay my crimp in there. Squeeze. I'm going to go down to the next one, squeeze again, to tighten it up. I'm going to tug. That's good. So now I'm going to cut off my extra wire. I'm going to go down here to this end. I'm going to put my crimp tube on, my wire guardian. Go back down the other channel of my wire guardian, back through the crimp tube. I always try to go through a few beads on this end to get my hands out of the way when I'm trying to crimp. Not sure if I can get back through these little 11 O's or not. I don't think I can. I think I'm going to have to just not do that this time. I'm going to make sure my wires are not crossed. Trying to get through those 11 O's, my wire came out of my crimp tube. Now I'm going to hold my wire guardian and pull my wire through. I want to make sure there's no slack in my piece, but I don't want it to be too tight either. I'm going to go back, go in that part with the tooth again. Lay the tooth on top. Squeeze. And then go in that part with the, the middle part of the circular parts there. And lay my crimp in there. Squeeze. And then go down to the next one and squeeze again. I'm going to tug. That's good. So now I'm going to off my extra wire. And that's going to be my longest strand. So hold on, I'll put my other strand on the uh, magic rod and then I'll come back and show it to you. So hold on. Okay, this is going to be my inner strand. I've got five 11 O's, a four millimeter, 
and 11 a 6 millimeter and 11 o, 3 4 millimeters and 11 o, 6 millimeter 11 o, 3 4 millimeters 11 o, 6 millimeter 11 o, 4 millimeter 11 o, 5 6 millimeters 11 o, 4 millimeter 11 o, 6 millimeter 11 o, 3 4 millimeters 11 o, 6 millimeter 11 o, 3 4 millimeters 11 o, 6 millimeter 11 o, a 4 millimeter and 5 11 o's. So that's going to be my pattern for my inner strand. So I'm going to put it on bead string and wire and I'm just going to crimp it off camera because I'm going to do it exactly like I just did that one. And then I'll come back and we'll put it all together. So I'll be back. Okay, I've got both my strands crimped now. And now I'm going to put it together. And I think I forgot to mention when I talked about my findings, I've got a couple of little links here that I'm going to use. I think these are like 10 millimeter links. I have a really hard time getting these multi-strand necklaces to lay right, so I thought it might be easier if I put it on a link instead of trying to put both pieces on a jump ring. So I'm going to take, this is a little 4 millimeter jump ring. Let me get my inner strand out of the way before I get them mixed up. I'm going to put this on my link. Close it up really well. I get another four millimeter jump ring. Do the same thing on this side. I'm going to take my inner strand, take another 4 millimeter jump ring, it on here. Take another four millimeter jump ring. on here. Now I've got a couple of pieces of chain here that are about five inches each. Take another four millimeter jump ring. my chain do my link take another four millimeter jump ring Attach this side of my chain. Okay, now I'm going to take a six, six, six millimeter jump ring.
catch my lobster clasp. I'm going to take an 8 millimeter jump ring. Attach another little piece that's about an inch and a half. Y'all knew I wouldn't get through that whole thing without dropping something, didn't you? <laughs> that's about an inch and a half of chain that I'm using as an extender. Okay, that's what I've got now. So now I'm going to get my little head pin and make a little dangle. So I'll be back. Okay, I've got a little ball head pin here. I'm going to put one of my little four millimeter beads on here. Go to the tip of my pliers. Bend my wire over at a 90 degree angle. Put my round those pliers in the crook of the bend. Round those pliers facing me. Bend the wire back until it hits the bead. Rotate the pliers till they're facing the table. Take this part in under here until it hits the bottom of the tool. Cock the wire back until the loop is centered over the bead. Take my bent chain nose pliers. Hold on to my loop. Take this part down until it's at a right angle to this. Take my bent chain nose pliers. My first wrap good and tight. Just wrap till there's no more room to wrap. And I did it again. I forgot to <laughs> I forgot to wrap it directly to my extender chain. I do that all the time. I'm gonna take my cutters and cut off the extra wire. Tuck in my little burr. Hold on, I'll get a little bitty jump ring to attach this with, and I'll be back. Okay, I just went ahead and attached my little dangle with a little 4 millimeter jump ring. I didn't figure y'all needed to see me do that. I don't know why I have such a hard time remembering that. I forget it almost every time. Um, like I said, I'll leave a link in the description box below that'll take you directly to the subscription page of the Potomac Beads website. They'll tell you all about the different subscriptions and all in case you want to check them out. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate those of you who have subscribed to my channel and watched my videos and liked and commented on my videos. I have a website where I sell my jewelry. It's Teresa's Handmade Jewelry, and I'll put a link to it in the description box below in case you're interested, along with a link to my Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and my email. If you haven't, I'd really love it if you'd subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload a new video. So until next time, hope you all have a great day. Take care.